Hi, welcome to my webinar, The Power of Learning Katana for Lighting. My name is Taeyang Kim, and I'm a senior lighting TD and look dev artist at Sony Pictures Imageworks. Before I begin, I would like to thank Foundry for inviting me to create this webinar. It's an honor to be here today. I also would like to thank Sony Pictures Imageworks for letting me use some of Imageworks materials during this webinar. Let me introduce myself first. My name is Taeyong Kim. I was born and raised in South Korea and came to Canada back in 1997. I always loved drawing and painting as a child, but it was the matrix that made me realize I want to do visual effects for a living. I started my career at Atmosphere Visual Effects as a Maya FX and Lighting TD, then I moved on to MPC. They were using Maya when I first started there, then they implemented Katana, and that was how I learned and started using Katana. After MPC, I joined Sony Pictures Imageworks as a Lighting TD first, then started doing LookDev as well. Working at Imageworks allows me to work on both animated and live action shows, which I find really fascinating and just awesome. I also teach lighting using Katana SCEA, Langara Center for Entertainment Arts. I also have been working with the Nomon Workshop, creating a tutorial on Katana, showing the basics of working in Katana, from creating a lighting template, to creating simple but useful tools to improve workflow. We are expecting it will be released very soon, before the end of the month. During this webinar, I will first talk about Katana as a lighting tool. I'll discuss how Katana's sequential workflow help boost our efficiency, some difference between when working on animated and live action shows. I will also share a lighting template that I'm using on my current show and talk about some notes and tools that we use regularly in our lighting team. Then I will share why I love using Katana as a look dev tool as well. Sometimes there are assets that need some maintenance work when it goes to lighting, like it evolves as we see it in different lighting situations. Fortunately, I'm working on a very fun and interesting asset that required a lot of this maintenance work on my current show, and I will show you how I'm using Katana to handle these needs from lighting department. Lastly, I'll talk about why I use Katana to teach lighting at school, and how I believe it will benefit my students in their future career. I'll also share some video interviews from some of my students and the head of School for Visual Effects and Animation at CEA, so you can hear their thoughts on Katana firsthand. Without further ado, let's start this webinar. Let's talk about sequential workflow first. This is one of key benefits of using Katana as a lighting tool. Traditionally, when working on multiple shots, one had to have separate directories and files for each shot. This makes it very time-consuming and difficult to do some common tasks like copying over things from one shot to another, or comparing how things are set up in each shot. Because Katana's sequential workflow makes it possible to work on multiple shots all at the same time, these tasks cannot get any easier. Let's take a look at an example. This is a Judo template that I made for this webinar, a very simplified version of what I use at work, which I will share one example of in a few moments. As you can see, this katana file or recipe has five shots, shot one to shot five. Up here, there are five nodes that bring in each shot's asset. This is where my key lighting setup is. I will explain what key lighting is shortly. From there, I have five branches for each shot. Each of these branch represents what I'm doing in each shot. As you can see, it's easy to see what I have done for each shot. Katana uses graph state variables and variable switch nodes to drive which branch to pick. If I choose shot 2, as you can see, corresponding nodes will be activated. Same for shot 3, shot 4, and shot 5. At Imageworks, to make sure we take full advantage of this sequential workflow, for animated shows especially, we invest quite some time on key lighting. 
Key lighting is a stage where we set up the light to achieve desired look and feel of an entire sequence. Let's look at one of sequences from Smallfoot that I did the key lighting on. You the stones were here to protect us. Daddy! Meet you. You came for me. Of course I came. I listened. Thank you. <gasps> what are those things? <laughs> Migo, come on! We can make it! Go! What are you doing? We can't let them follow us home. Migo! Just go! No! Here I am! Come and get me! Usually, shots in a sequence are split into key shots, same as shots, one-off shots. Key lighters work on key shots first, then see how the light setup works on same as shots and one-off shots. From there, lighting tweaks are made in each shot until the lighting job is considered done anywhere between 80 to 90 percent. When key lighting is approved for the sequence, it gets passed on to other lighters and they take the shots to final, which is called shot lighting. On animated shows especially, because having a strong key light setup has proved its efficiency, we almost always spend some time on key lighting until things get too busy and cannot afford to. With good key lighting setup, lighters get to final more shots within shorter amount of time. On Vivo, which released on Netflix on August 6th, please go watch it, it's a beautiful show. We had a team of key lighters only for a few months before other lighters joined the show. As a lighting artist, I find key lighting really rewarding because I get to decide how every single light lives in the sequence. Following directions from my supervisors, I get to light the entire world from darkness and achieve the look and feel the client wants. Not only that, sometimes your soup throws you something you didn't think of and you need to come up with a smart solution. For example, in these helicopter chase shots, I first only had a spotlight constraint to the helicopter and its volume. When I showed my first few lighting passes, my VFX soup said, with this super strong searchlight, it would be really cool to have the volume act as a light source, which I didn't really think of before. So I came up with a solution to make the volume appear as a light source, and I think it helped a lot making this sequence look even cooler than before. This may sound like only an aesthetic challenge, but it's also a technical challenge as well. Because Katana is a node-based program, it's like a blueprint or a map. If everything is well laid out, you can do a lot of things, and it will get you anywhere you want to go. But if it's not, you won't be able to do much with it, and you will hate whoever created it. For this reason, I need to make sure the template is well organized, easy to read, and optimized for faster renders. I find setting up the template itself is a very fun challenge when working as a key lighter. On live action shows, on the other hand, we cannot afford to spend a lot of time on key lighting. Time frame for live action shows are a lot shorter. On Vivo, which we released on Netflix on August 6th, please go watch it, it's a beautiful show. I was on the show for two years, looked up to lighting. But my current live action show, again looked up to lighting, is only going to be somewhere between 6 to 8 months. Some live action shows are even shorter. Because of the shorter time frame, I find working on live action shows are quite dynamic. Like riding a roller coaster, it's very fast paced and not very linear. But that doesn't mean the live action shows doesn't benefit from Katana's sequential workflow. We still get to start from a key lighting and work on multiple shots at the same time. I would say because I mentioned traits of live action shows, 
Katana sequential workflow is as essential, if not more. Let's take a look at a lighting template from my current show. This is a lighting template that I use on my current show. It's created and maintained by Andreas Gabriunas, my lighting lead. Every show would have similar but different lighting template. That is because every leads and key lighters have different preferences on how the template should be set up and different shows require somewhat different customization. Like live action shows would require some different setup from animated shows and shows like Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse would need some special setup compared to other animated shows. So this template would represent only one example of lighting template that we use here at Imageworks. Compared to what I shared previously, this might appear a bit more complicated, but base structure is same. Here at the top area, access for the shots are imported. In this session, key lighting setup is done, and this is where shot lighting is happening, and all these are render passes. At Imageworks, instead of having multiple import matics like I showed before, we have a tool that does everything in one node. This tool allows artists to add shots automatically or manually. As you can see, I have 8 shots in this katana script. When a shot is set to current, it automatically updates the required assets and katana's frame range as well. Graph state variable on the top is linked using expression referencing activated shot in this node, but I broke the link for the purpose of this webinar. In this session, we have nodes like Collection Create Nodes, Local Material Assignment, Loop File Manager. This is where the key light setup is located. As you can see, I have 6 branches. If you remember, I have 8 shots in my template. If multiple shots require a little or no lighting tweaks, those shots can be combined into one branch. Then using a variable switch node, the changes can be made for each shot. These branches also include different setups for render passes that we see down here. Let's take a look at this group of render passes. This is where all the environment related passes are located. And these are some interactive lighting passes on environment passes. We are separating any interactive lighting effects like flashlights from cameras and whatnot for lighting, rendering, and compositing efficiency. As you can see, we have a lot of passes for different purposes. And all these different passes require different setup. For example, for all the environment passes, we would want to turn off character's camera visibility. And for character passes, we would turn off environment camera visibility. And also, say, we have Homer and Bart in the same shot. For Bart pass, we would turn off camera visibility of Homer. We also might turn off displacement and hair on Homer depending on its impact on Bart Pass. To do this rather complicated setup, we extensively use Katana's variable switch node and variable unable group in conjunction with variable set node and graph state variable. As I showed before, graph state variable is here on the top. Depending on what I choose variable switch node that looks at graph state variable chooses corresponding branch. If you look here, we have a variable set node. Its variable name is pass group. Its variable value is environment. If I go to shot lighting session, there are a few variable unabled group nodes. As you can see, this node is activated. That is because this node is looking for a variable set node with pass group as its variable name and has env as its variable values. With those variable set nodes at the bottom of node graph, we activate this node and what is inside. Inside the variable unabled group node, there is a variable switch node with pass name as its variable name and its value which is set near each passes render node, as you can see here. Whatever I do here will be only for whatever is connected to corresponding variable set nodes. For example, if I create a new light like this,
It will only affect shot G building passes. No other passes will be affected by this light because the node is not activated for those branches. As you might have noticed, there are a lot of passes, and not all the shots require all of these passes. We have a tool that lets us pick which shot to render, and which passes should be rendered for each of render shots. We also use live group quite extensively as well. This key light setup is a live group for example. Whenever my lighting lead makes changes to it, it will get updated in the template automatically, so we know we have latest and greatest setup from him. Many artists come up with their own customized setup or tools while working on their shots that can be also helpful for other team members. And those tools are placed here to be shared. It's also a live group as well. So when more tools and setups are created, they will be added in this live group. So every artist on the show have access to them for their shot work. As you can see, Katana's powerful sequential workflow make it possible to work on multiple shots all at the same time without much hassle. Also, Katana makes it so easy to share tools and setups that artists come up with, which result another boost in artist efficiency. Using Katana, with help of amazingly talented artists, supervisors, and production teams, Imageworks are able to create what they create in a very efficient and manageable way. Now, let's talk about why I enjoy using Katana as a look depth tool. One of the assets that I look depth on my current show had a lot. I mean a lot of long boards like this. As always, I spend quite some time to match plates and reference images when look depthing this asset. When Katana look file was published and the lighters started lighting the asset in the shot, it worked as expected for most of shots. However, we soon realized that for some shots, depending on camera's angle, distance from the asset, and lighting situations, we need different setup for roughness breakup on the boards. I could not just use textures and bake it to KLF, because depending on camera angles and its distance from the asset, the intensity and scale of the breakup needed to be adjusted. In close-up shots like this, we would need really small breakup. But in longer shots like this, those small breakups would not be visible at all. I needed to give full control to lighters to adjust the values and tweak the materials depending on their shots without causing them too much headache, but still within a reasonable limits. Let's take a look at node graph that makes up this asset's material. We use something called pattern create at Imageworks is equivalent of network material create node in Foundry's Katana. All these nodes make up how the asset appears, and every parameter in these nodes can be adjusted to change material's reaction to lights. Obviously, I cannot expect lighters to dive into this network and make changes to make it work in their shots. That would be just crazy and everyone will hate me. This is why I made this tool here. By exposing selected parameters from nodes in the pattern create, I can connect them to parameters that I created in this tool. This is where randomization of normal can be adjusted from 0 to 1. 0 means no randomization and 1 means full. If 1 does not give enough randomization, they can activate this parameter and push it even further. The roughness breakup is made up with three different scales so they can be mixed to their taste. Depending on shot's needs, the visibility of this roughness breakup can be dialed, also each scale. By creating tools like this, I can help lighters to make changes to material and make it work in their shots without much hassle. When I make changes to the tool and pass it to lighting lead, he updates the tool in his live groups, so all lighters pick it up automatically. If customization is required, they can do so very easily by placing the node in their template and adjust values on their own. I find having the ability to create tools like this 
and being able to share it with other team members is an absolute necessity when working as a look dev artist. Which leads me to reasons why more responsibilities I get as an artist, the more I enjoy using Katana. As a junior artist, I enjoyed Katana because it was easy to understand what's going on. As a senior artist, I enjoy Katana even more because as I shared just now, Katana makes it so easy to work with team members and create tools for others. I can't imagine how I could do what I do if it wasn't Katana, really. I use Katana to teach lighting at CEA as well. Before I go on, let's hear what the students have to say about Katana. Hello, my name is Adelina and I'm studying advanced visual effects at the CEA. My first experience with Katana was really frustrating. I didn't really like it at first and I wouldn't think that I would be still using it at this time. It took me some time to get used to Katana too because I was not used to do lighting procedural way. While I was using it, I got really used to it and now I don't really see coming back to Maya to light uh, my models or any other software. Uh, I feel like Katana is really, really comfortable. It shows you the errors right away and it shows you where that error is and it's really easy to fix stuff. And when I got to the studio, Bardell, they were actually using a Katana for their whole lighting pipeline. And I was surprised because uh, I didn't know that a lot of studios uh, use this software. And currently I'm using Katana every day when I work and I love it. I don't know, I can't see myself going back to any other software. And yeah, that was my experience with Katana. Thank you. Hey, my name is Harshit, aka Harry, and I started using Katana eight months before. I still remember the moment I opened the software, I was a bit confused because I was also a Maya person whenever it comes for lighting. But it totally changed my mindset throughout the time being after using Katana. The moment I started using Katana, I still remember that I was not familiar with how the node-based method is going to work for the lighting workflow. but the moment slowly I got into the interface and started learning the workspace, I got to know about how powerful this tool becomes. For me, especially being a student, I do a lot of many changes in my lighting setup. And it helped me to approach it without starting it from scratch. Because of these key features, Katana had became an industry-driven software, which really helped me to land on my first job as a lighter, just after learning a few months of Katana. Hello, my name is Akshay Venugopal. I'm a Term 5 VFX student at Langar CEA. I've been using Katana since for the past five months, and it's been a really good journey with Katana. Because when I opened it for the first time in my first class, it was a little bit confusing. After using Katana for a bit of time, what I understood was like at the beginning, I was using it for just single shots. But once I got into a studio, as a junior lighting pump artist, you might get like 20 to 30 shots in a sequence. And that is why I was like really impressed with this Katana because it has a non-destructive workflow that allows you to just keep building tools and you, you can reuse the templates as much as you want other than creating every, every shot from scratch. So that saves you a lot of time and it makes it so much convenient and efficient in a pipeline. I remember the first time I saw the interface and thought, what is going on here? And then where is my render? Or what is this thing complaining about? It was my first personal project that helped me the most. Going in on my own and practice what I learned made me realize how amazing the program is. Note base is something I really love about Katana. Debugging is easier and you can check your render log. Most of the times it tells you exactly where your problem is. I started my career as a compositor. But after working in Katana, I can see myself as a lighter too. I'll be honest, as it was mentioned multiple times, most of my students, if not all, find it very confusing and dislike it when they first start using Katana. But I don't blame them really. They are used to another software, and it's probably their first time even hearing about Katana. When they first open it, there's nothing, and they can't even create a cube and admire it. But after only a few weeks of using it, they get converted. Really, 
You heard what they said. Once they get used to katana, they all love it and start to realize its power. And it also helped them find their first job in the industry, even before they finish their program at CEA. Let's see what the head of School for Visual Effects and Animation at CEA has to say about Katana. Hi everyone, my name is Melissa Best and I am the head of the School for Visual Effects and Animation here at the Center for Entertainment Arts. When we first launched our school, we knew that we had something that was really special. Many Foundry products were already in our pipeline, including Nuke and Mari. After much research, with no surprise, Katana was an industry favorite at many top studios, and it became a must-have for our students as well. To be a top school, we have to adapt to what the industry is looking for. We are very excited at the work that our students, Taeyong, and the fellow lighting instructors have produced through Katana, and the work that has yet to come. Thank you so much to Taeyong and the Foundry for helping us to share our story today. As she mentioned in the video, Katana is being used by many studios, big or small. And thanks to CA's amazing work initiative program, our students are able to get an opportunity to use what they learned at school in a real studio environment. With Katana taught only a few months, our students were able to fit right in as a junior artist, which led them to a full-time contract even before they finished their program at CEA, which I find just amazing. To become a lighting artist, one needs to know how to light, and katana is obviously a great tool to teach that, because lighting is one of the two reasons why katana was created in the first place. But that's not the only reason why I use katana to teach lighting to my students. For student interviews we just watched, I didn't tell them what to say or what I wanted to hear, but I'm really glad they mentioned how easy it is to debug in katana. Because that is what I want them to learn besides lighting. Because katana is a node-based program, it makes it possible to train them problem-solve and debug by logical thinking and by really understanding what's going on in the script not by guessing or following random instructions found on the internet and hoping for the best. During first few classes, a lot of students run into a lot of problems. Of course, it is expected. They are our students. They panic and say, Young, this doesn't work, that doesn't work. I tell them it's okay to break things, because really, that's how they learn. Then we as a class look at their katanas in together. Most of times, I can spot and fix the problem in a couple minutes all while I explain my thoughts process of debugging problems. Again, all this is possible because Katana is a node-based program, which makes it easy to track down what has been done and what is breaking things. As the class proceeds, I can see they build up their logical thinking and debugging skills. I still love the excitement in their voice when they first successfully debug something without my help. I think these are really important skills to have to survive in this fierce and competitive industry. And Katana is one of the best programs that I can think of to introduce these skill sets to students. They may not know it yet, but they might not end up as a lighter. They could be doing something else and end up not using Katana at all in their career. But this logical thinking and problem solving debugging training will stick with them no matter what they do and I believe it will only help them in their career. If they become a lighter, even better. They will continue realizing the power of katana and love it more and more, just like me. This is end of my webinar. I hope you learned something valuable today and realize the power of learning katana for lighting. Thank you very much. Bye.